Coming up, we're going to discuss Helen Mirren being joined uh, with the cast of Fast 8 coming up next summer. Live from the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Universal Edition of The Diz Unplugged. This is episode 90 of The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hey everyone, welcome to today's Universal Edition podcast. Unless you're not listening to it today, then it's some other days. I am your host, Craig Williams, and today joining with me is always, as always, not is always. It's always. Well, he is always and as mm. always. A, uh, it's a slouching, it looks like. I, am. I don't but know what happened. I was a slouching up. rhino clavin. Hello. Hello. It's the cushion in the chair in the middle is going in this chair, so I'm sitting on the edge of wood. <laughs> so, yep, you just got to get the cushion to stop. Stop that sliding. Yes. Also, pushing. on the back on the controls, our engineer of the day and our hearts... I'm engineering your heart. <laughs> yeah, why not? Oh, Craig, you're too kind. I just I dug myself in too deep to walk out of it. So, Oliver Green. Hello, everyone. Hey, so uh, this is going to be a very fun episode. I think my opinion. Uh, not it doesn't have to be. We'll see what happens here. But uh, no, I was just making one of my classic awful jokes that fall flat at the beginning. We are not talking about Helen Mirren today. I am very excited that she's joining the cast of Fast Eight. Oh yeah, I, I they would have been fools not to cast her when she as soon as she, as soon as she said that she wanted to be like out there driving those cars. I if I, I was in that studio, I would have been like, get her on We're the phone right now, lock her in. Yeah, yeah. no, it's that is exciting. Isn't and that Charlize was a couple Theron weeks ago. Is in, but is, yeah, she's the villain in this one. Yeah, so yeah. what what a crazy amount of people like good for them joining in, just having fun in their life. You know, yeah, I. I'm. I might have to pick back up and start watching these movies again because I told you I've only seen two and six. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, I've seen yeah, one, but I can't remember. Got to see seven. Yeah. Gotta but I. But it. I think I've got to watch five at least to kind of get where it started. It's your prerogative. The heist. That's whatever you want to do. But oh, uh, Bobby no, Brown over there. Today we are going to be talking about uh, Volcano Bay. The Universal's third the explosive theme, theme park. park. Yes, the the third one. We're going to be huh? discussing that. Uh, the big the big thing we do have for you is our dining review of three broomsticks at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade. Uh, of course, the the British pub style food that we have our expert Brit in the room to tell us how authentic it actually is. So that's going to be exciting. Um, but yeah, we're going to do Volcano Bay just a little bit, have a little discussion on everything that's happening with that uh, right before. But as always, I have to open it up to housekeeping before we get started. Housekeeping. Um, I don't. It's not really housekeeping, but um, did you see, I, th- I don't know if I sh- ended up sending it to you, that they made a uh, Lewis um, pop final? I did. I don't know if it, that was just commission. No, it or wasn't. Like a fan made it, it was, or was it pop vinyl made? Some it? guy in Colorado made it. Oh, he made it. Yeah, yeah. because you're able to buy like vinyl mations. The blank. Ones, you're able right? to buy the blank ones, and he took it upon himself to do it. I heard some mixed opinions on it. Oh, really? I, I mean, I thought it was cool looking. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know him, and so I didn't. I didn't know if that was a thing he liked I've, or what the deal was. I don't know. This is all secondhand information, but I heard that. The people who knew him best were very upset that they chose to portray him on that. Really? So yeah. Oh, which I kind of understand. Like, I well, like I said, I didn't know him. I didn't know if that was a thing. He, I saw it immediately. Thought, oh, he must have really liked pop finals or something. That's all I could think about. Like, because it, it, that's if he doesn't, then it gets a little weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. All I was just somebody who made it all. All I would say is that if someone went out of their way to make this, they didn't go out of their way like with malice to do this. So if oh. people are upset, they like, you know, 
It's it is like maybe they want him to be remembered in a different way because they knew him personally. But that you've got to remember when this person decided to go out their way and create that. They didn't go out there with the intention no. of upsetting anyone. No, I just I there's there's lots of politics that go around to it, and even you know I'll, there's even religious aspects to it that you know there are in the I don't want to speak for the Latin community because I don't know enough about them, but I do know from. Uh, friends that I do have is that they are very religious and doing something like this is kind of like creating an idol. Okay. I see. So there's, there's implications on that level. It it, uh, definitely a touching gesture. Uh, just another sign of how far this whole thing has reached out. How the, the, it's interesting. Like I went to, I've been going to the memorials every day and, um, they just keep getting bigger and bigger. But, uh, there's a lot of interesting things that people are leaving yeah. there. You know that, did you, I don't know if either of you have gone, but I'm just going to share the story anyways, but that like Ikea donated a, a white couch when they left markers everywhere. So people, ha- oh, I, I don't, wow. I didn't, I don't know if the significance is supposed to be because there was like the white room in the, the club is all I could think of. Either way, it was a nice, it's just covered in signatures and stuff like that. And then somebody else donated this big piece of art with wood on the back and it has shells for people to write stuff on it and everything. And, it just keeps going crazy, which, you know, so it's like what you said. It's interesting to see how, how far it reached and how yeah. how people react in that way. But No, it's just, it's just positive. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, um, always, it's nice to hear happy news. Um, and I don't think we talked about it last week, so I'm glad that this train of thought mm. went there, is that Orlando, that Universal did donate yeah. money as well. It, yeah. I think it happened while we were doing the show. It, it did, yeah, it happened. So Universal joined the... The One Orlando, One Orlando yeah. Fund and also donated a million dollars to it, which is just incredible. And, yeah. you know, Kylie's been sharing some information with me about, like, stuff, how they've been talking about everything behind the scenes. Just said that management at Universal has been going out of their way to make sure that everyone is is in the best spirits possible that they can be and that they all come together as a team. So really, That's Universal nice. yeah. is just... Treating people with a lot of respect. That's it, nice. I mean, they held that vigil that was very nice, too, that was just for the team members and, sp- and the family and stuff, yeah. right? Like, affected. And it was... Yeah. A, I saw some photos from that, and that was really nice. Yeah, they, they, did, they did. They released one of the photos of it. It was it was absolutely beautiful. They gave everyone the blinking, uh, the colored wristbands. Oh, nice. So that way, whenever they were all... Yeah. There together, it just it really showed the sea of people that it's still still tragic. But yeah, we are starting to find some positivity as yeah. the dust is starting to settle. And uh, no, it was like not to get too far off topic. I know, but right, like, sorry. <laughs> today I I did drive past uh, Pulse in that area for the first time since the road's been opened back up again, and it was just it, it's so weird. There, or is it? Yeah, like- there's there's a lot of memorials and tributes left out front uh like i told you before we started cops just constantly all around it guarding yeah of everything because it is still, still an, an active, active crime scene, scene. Yeah. but it's just it was it was very weird to be yeah. able to drive past it again after all of it yeah yeah but, well i just thought that was worth no it absolutely was thank you thank you but uh oliver any housekeeping for you um no. no nothing off the top of my head yeah that's great what's about normal <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> no i guess i've just got one more uh item of housekeeping too to to mention nothing groundbreaking or anything uh we've been getting i i've no i've been getting it into our email we've gotten a couple more questions asking about jl i think some people did miss yeah the I think, show I think that, they just missed that part of the show or yeah missed, like didn't because it happened at the end or whatever like right well, no, it was in, in the, the beginning and then at the end, but JL is no longer with the Diz, anything a part of it. Um, she is off doing a new endeavor, and I, it's not that we're being secretive about it. We're not allowed to say what she's doing. Only she is allowed to talk about it just because of the job that she does have. So uh, she is still available to find on Facebook and Twitter and everywhere out there. So if you want to keep more up to date with what she's still doing, she is. Uh, she's happy to still communicate and interact with everyone oh, who's yeah, come to know her along the way uh so yeah we'd we'd love to say what she's doing we're just not allowed uh there are some jobs out there where you have to be secretive about what you're doing and that's where we have to leave it at that so i know there's a lot of interest just wish her a lot of love in mother russia 
Yes, <laughs> making it out yeah. when she's a James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> if you what what was that awful movie with like John Candy and Dan Aykroyd were like Soviet or that was Die Hard? No. <laughs> I'll think of it. Don't look at me. I'll I've not got a clue. With John Candy? It wasn't John Candy. Yeah, I was just going to say. Was, I don't... Someone else will know it. It was a, like something like Spies Like Us or something. I, I hope. Who was in Some... it again? Who did you just say? I think Dan Aykroyd was part of it. It might have been Martin Short, too. Or not Martin Short. Steve Martin. Hmm. They were like Russian. Sp- they were spies that were in Russia. The Three Amigos? Yes, the Three Amigos. <laughs> Someone in the chat, let us know as soon as this catches up yeah. and we see it. But, okay, no other housekeeping. Let's talk about what I want to talk about because it is spies like us. Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now it's come pouring in. Uh, it's not a universal show if we don't get off track by trying to figure out what a movie is. Exactly. I, I can please, Chevy Chase. Oh, gosh. How could Chevy I be Chase. so wrong? I mean, I named every 80s comedian, yeah. essentially. Uh Sorry, Volcano Bay. Big, big, big news on it. So uh, this past week, the U.S. Travel Association has been doing their IPW conference. Uh, That was in New Orleans, I believe. And uh, it's just travel places from all around the world uh, have come together at this conference to kind of show off what they do. And Universal was a player there. uh, Where They had a booth and they they had a a nice little press event where they kind of talked about some of the upcoming things. Uh, Of course, uh, they they kind of, for the Hollywood side, I don't want to get too much into that because that's not what we're here for, but they were hyping up that there was going to be all these big announcements regarding Hollywood. And basically they ended up saying like, Oh yeah, we're going to continue to update city walk, something that they've been trying to do out there. And the movie theater is getting a new design. Um, and then they released the brand new universal logo that they're putting out there that is getting used also, I believe for our universal studios. Oh, in, yeah. In I Florida as well too. Um, do we have a note of a photo of that? I uh, sorry, I didn't pull because I couldn't find an official one that had the logo for Florida. But I did see on Twitter, I believe today, someone posted that the signage was starting to be added into the parks as well too. So uh, it's it won't take long until it is out there and around. But uh, on the Universal Florida side, the Universal Orlando, gosh, we were having a conversation before the show where I had to mm-hmm. yell at rhino and oliver because they were calling it universal florida instead of universal orlando universal studios florida is what i referred to it as we don't call it we don't call it universal florida and we don't call it universal studios orlando call it universal studios florida universal orlando resort we get it right or we don't get it at all get it right or pay the price yeah that's from eat your shorts salute your shorts i'm sorry (laughs) yeah so (laughs) donkey Okay, so Volcano Bay, they finally gave out the deets on that, and then the next day after that, uh, the Universal Orlando official blog kind of came in and gave even more information on it, Uh, so there's a lot to go along with it. So uh, we knew where Volcano Bay was going before, just south of Cabana Bay Beach Resort. Uh, We've been seeing the structure go up for some time the actual volcano in the middle which if you watched me yesterday on the daily fix you will know that i said crack a towel over and over again (laughs) um that is because it was spelled k-r-a-k-a-t-a-u which i assumed that was going to be crack a towel because that's how i would phonetically say it out someone pointed out to me in the comments that that's actually the indonesian way of spelling krakatoa which, of course, I know Krakatoa. If you know me, I am at Trader Sam's in Disneyland and Walt Nothing. Disney World as often as I possibly can yeah. with money. Uh, so I, I very well know what and how to say Krakatoa. I just was confused by Indonesian spelling because, well, I last time I checked, I'm not from Indonesia, believe it or not. Uh, that surprises me. It surprises me, too. So... Volcano Bay, we now know it'll be 28 acres. Wow. 28. That's a very small number. I was going to say... Oliver's like sitting in the back trying to do math. Can we... Can can you convert it to meters? Yeah. Can we... Can we we like compare that to something? I'm not good with the acreage. I never understood it. Uh, Well, 28 acres is 113,312 square meters. 
Oh, great. Ooh. That's good for the British person over there. <laughs> that's, it's big, Rhino. It's, that's all you need to know. It's big. I'm just Like, how many football Fish. fields? Is that, is that, like, what, what's the average house built on? Half an acre? An acre? In Florida, I think it's like zero acres. So, just to, to point this out to you, uh, Disney World is 25,000 acres, which equivalates to 40 square miles. Jeez Louise. So, there you go. That's that's as good as I'm giving it to you in terms of acreage. <laughs> it's really tiny. It's really, really tiny. I'll just say that. Oh, uh, Beats there's, behind us in the back. There's a conscience on his <laughs> shoulder right here. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was your phone for a second. I was so like, did oh. I. I was very confused. I thought I... someone was tapping on the window because I can't hear with the headphones on that well. So <laughs> I got very scared for us all very, very quickly. Uh, very scary, though. So uh, the, <laughs> way, um, the way Universal is describing Volcano Bay, it's a lush tropical oasis that unfolds before you, instantly transporting you to the little known Pacific Isle. In the distance, a colossal volcano rises above a sparkling beach boasting majestic waterfalls by day and blazing lava by night Ooh. i can't wait to see what that's going to look like at night because you know i mean well we live here but when you take that exit that sand lake exit oh, yeah. off of i4 when you're going i4 west uh it, you're just coming right up and you can see into the entire like park that they're building oh it's absolutely stunning and uh you know, while I still live in that area, I need to keep doing it. But I did a construction update on it a couple of weeks ago where I actually walked as close as I could get to it and tried to get some video of it. And I went up on the parking deck of Cabana Bay and kind of looked down over mm. to, to get a bird's eye view on it. And it is, it is coming together so quickly. And it's nice now because right now it just looks like a bunch of bare slides all wide open, just dirt mounds yeah, and, and it the structure. Look overly impressive No, yet. not at all. You're, but you can tell right now because I went over it um, last night or the night before and – I was like, oh, that's where they're going to put the, uh, you know, that's the yeah. that's the wave pool area. Like, that's where they're putting the cement down for that. Yeah, but now that we're actually seeing the, the concept art that they put out there in yeah. the promotional video where you see just how dense and lush this area is going to be. And uh, we'll have all these photos in the show notes as well as the link to the article that we have up about it. One thing I'm very excited about, Tangent, is we get... In this picture that's currently up for those who are watching, sorry listeners out there, you can actually see Cabana Bay's third tower in there. Oh, and yeah. mm. it's nice and rounded, and that really excites me because I didn't know what style they were going to build that in, and it looks very promising. Uh, but yeah, I think I think the fact that it is going to be bare open slides, something that's very, you know, Disney with their slides, they do the best to like put rock work around it, really make it blend in at Typhoon Lagoon yeah. and Blizzard Beach. So it was a little off putting seeing it like this. However, now that I can see all the trees and stuff going up around it, once it all grows in, I think it's, it really is going to just bring it all together. Uh, but one thing for sure is, although they are calling this the third theme park, it is a water park. Yeah, yeah. In I, every sense of the word. Can I yeah. just say as well, I got an email from Universal the other day, and the way it was worded, like the title, it said like three amazing theme parks. I got so excited when I read that. <laughs> I thought that they just like dropped the third gate. I was like, "This is it. This is it." No, no, it's just the water park. Well, yeah. what's the um, what's the rumor on that? Did you what? You didn't just say it, right? Why they're saying. Why they're calling it a theme park? Oh yeah, no, it's it's kind of out there. Everyone's starting to put it together. Uh, they're, they're really pushing it as the third theme park. They're calling it the immersive water theme park, calling it the third gate because it isn't the, this isn't going again on the land that they just purchased. Yeah. This is on south of Cabana Bay, not over on the international drive side. So what's going to happen now is as soon as they are done opening this and they get ready to open that next park that will be down the road, all of a sudden they now can say that's our fourth gate coming in. And if you do the math, right now Disney says that they have four parks, yeah, plus two water parks in uh, at so they have like uh, the Walt Disney World pass, Resort, you know I mean? and yeah, so they Universal. they have the four park pass. And so now Universal is saying by adding that theme park in, they're also going to be able to say we have four, four parks. parks, we have just as many as Disney does. Uh, so I don't know if that'll push Disney to go. We have uh, we have six parks. Then if you want to go with that lingo, then then the battle's back, but. I, I'm hoping that they include the that Universal includes the um, the water park in just in the main 
um, the main pass? They Well, they will. They're going to be offering a new type of ticket called the Explorer ticket. It's going to be a three-park pass. So you can do... So will that be all, like above what we have right now? Because we have the top... Well, you're pass. talking... Yeah, it'll. I'm sure it'll be added in our annual pass. Yeah. It, for, I'm, it oh, probably you're, won't... you're talking about like a guest No, a location. new guest ticket. Yeah. For our annual passes, it'll probably... It'll probably be in ours, maybe the preferred, yeah, with some block out dates, and then I'm sure for the base pass, it'll probably just be the regular two parks. I yeah. I don't know. They haven't said anything about it. This is just my speculation, but I I it will absolutely be in the annual passes. They're adding the new Explorer ticket that that will be the three park hopper pass, and then I'm mm-hmm. sure you can still do the two park hopper pass between the other two and not hopper. That's Disney lingo, but so ingrained in our brains, it's hard to not say it. Um, and then they'll have their single park admission tickets as always. But uh, let's get into the the nitty gritty, what this park is actually about. So it's going to have four lands with a total of 18 attractions. All but one has been disclosed so far. Wow. So uh, the first land, and this is all according to Universal's official blog, so I'm not making any of this stuff up. This is all their lingo and their wording. Uh, Universal uh, says Krakatoa, not Krakatoa. Mm-hmm. Sorry again. Uh, At the heart of the park, you'll see the 200-foot volcano called Krakatoa. By day, you'll see its majestic waterfalls, and by night, the volcano will illuminate with blazing lava. So here's where we already have the first. I know I said that line kind of before in a different way, but we already know that this will be a night and day park because we'll be able to see this volcano See, I would love that because in the dead of the heat, even though it's a water park in the summer here, you are always – sometimes it's just too hot. And and the water gets hot, but – like going at night would be awesome. Correct me if I'm wrong. All Disney water parks close at dusk, right? Yeah, yeah. You even can't in, even in summer. It's like seven o'clock. Yeah, I I can't remember ever being at a Disney water park at night, and I didn't know if it was just because my family never wanted to do it. No, I've, I've I had just, friends who have come down in the last couple of years, and they they did the water park and. I want to say I was like, oh, I'll go join them. And then I went to go, and it was like 3.30, and I was like, it's not worth yeah. it because it closes too early. I could be totally down for a nighttime water park because that way, A, my delicate ginger skin won't burn <laughs> in the hot day sun. And then also, the fact that it's dark outside will hide how ashamed I am of my beer belly. Well, it'll it'll be – see, I have the opposite reaction when I go to water parks. I always think, God, I look so much better than most of these people. I feel good about myself. Like I always tell people, anybody with self esteem issues, go to a go to a Disney <laughs> water park, and I don't even mean that in a mean way. Like, admire the people's courage that they have to show off the body, and think you. And chances are, those people who are that courageous, they don't have a body as nice as yours. Not that I have a nice body. I'm just all I can say as a lifeguard, the number one thing I took away from a lifeguard is people dress for the body they want, not oh. the body they've got. <laughs> wow. Well. <huh? laughs> This body shaming has been brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. <laughs> We're all beautiful. You're all beautiful. Wear what, wear what makes you comfortable, no matter what. Uh, okay. So inside Krakatoa, first thing we're going to find are uh, three distinctive body slides uh, that will be at the rear of the volcano, and each starts off with surprise doors that drop out from beneath you, <gasps> which Oh, I, so you like... St- oh wow so it's like push the button and exactly you're in mr burns office and just like (laughs) yeah (laughs) and this has become a a big thing all of a sudden now with these slides i've i still haven't done one whenever we were on the uh the press cruise for the magic that's what they added on the side of their ship a drop down and swirl around off the side of the boat oh i didn't know it dropped you like that. yeah it dropped you like that i i never got to do it on there i forgot to bring a bathing suit as uh, embarrassing enough as that is. Why you just buy one on the ship? Because they're so overpriced. Oh, my gosh. But to go in a clear slide that goes out of and your then, ship and back in. And then in. the worst part is we had our podcast cruise later on that ship, and I didn't go swimming a single time while we were on that one. Oh, but wow. I'm, I'm stupid like that. But anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah, the first one is the co okiri body plunge a racing 70 degree drop that will plummet 125 feet through the center of krakatoa it will be the world's first slide to travel through a pool filled with guests so what that makes me think is that there's going to be like a the the tube for the slide is going through a pool if it was if it was like a glass one, yeah, would you be able to see the people going through? That could be like Don't really have cool. Don't claustrophobia, but that will that would be like kind of amazing. That would be absolutely awesome. I th- think it would just be like um, you know, Aquatica. They do something very similar, but just with dolphins. So you, you yeah. go through a yeah, clear yeah, tube. Yeah. It'll be identical, but instead of dolphins, it'll be people. Oh, people. That's what I'm like, assuming. I mean, that's 
What if people are doing weird <laughs> stuff under the water? That's where it gets weird. <laughs> well, you normally go in that fast, you can't tell. So, um, but I'm sure Ronnie will try and stop himself to have a look. So oh, I'll be grabbing the tube as I go. Like, <laughs> <laughs> slow me. Yes. Sir, please, let go. <laughs> let go, sir. Uh, but you know what? Okay, so on that note, I sometimes do get nervous in closed tube water slides only because of the Simpsons episode where Homer gets stuck in the water <laughs> yeah. slide. So I always have paranoia that I'm going to get caught in the middle Kids of the water slide. Kids will be butting up against you yeah. in the slide because <laughs> traffic delay. or in like the way way back where they have to like throw three kids down the water yeah. slide to knock it loose <laughs> okay so we also have the kala and ta nui serpentine body slides it'll be two intertwining slides where you'll fall freely along 124 twisting feet also in krakatoa will intertwined be, yeah so it is it must be a tube drop i i don't know yet Interesting, because that's kind of like you know I've I've done the once uh, the what's that big one at Typhoon Lagoon where you go way up and the the summit plummet is that it summit plummet to uh, Blizzard Beach Blizzard Beach well the one that when you were at the top of Lights Motors Action you could see it out yeah. in the thing that one that's super tall I did that once and it's just an open slide where you drop down but I'm wondering if now since they're saying intertwined if it's two people go at once and you go around maybe I don't know yeah. either way sorry uh, there will also be Pung, punja or punga racers a high-speed race through four different enclosed slides featuring mantis-shaped mats Ooh, like a manta ray oh it's fun Bzz. and then also in krakatoa <laughs> the noise, the will be made? the secret attraction this is the one that they're not talking about yet and this is where some are speculating that this won't be an actual uh this won't be a water park slide this will be something that is like a more attraction based. So that way, this is where they're getting away calling it a water theme park because you got mm. all the slides, but then there's something else. But they're being very secretive about it. I haven't heard anything mm. about it either. So I wish, and if there's anyone knows any of the rumors, I'd love to hear it. I won't believe it until it's out there. Uh, next area, the next land is Wave Village, located at the base of Krakatoa. Wave Village is a perfect place to soak in the sun and relax on the sandy shores. It includes Waturi Beach, a sparkling multi-directional wave pool where you can swim, relax on the sand, or indulge in a private one- or two-story cabanas. Two-story cabana? Shut the front door on that. Two well, you can't. Cabanas cabana. are usually yeah, open. Yeah, I think that defeats um, the purpose of the cabana. But And then you also have story. the reef. Do you get to keep the story? I'm wondering if it's like... You don't get both floors, though. You only get to keep one store. No, I, you'll, you'll probably be able to get two. So you'll be able to have a big big friend party. That's cool. Yeah. If you have enough friends, you can get a two-story cabana. I've got at least three. Oh, you I know. can all... I, are you just counting us two? Yeah. <laughs> and yourself? Is that your three friends? I can absolutely tell you. I do not have friends. So wow. I will not be able to fill them up in this one. Uh, we'll also have the reef and adjacent leisure pool with calmer waters and exciting views of riders speeding through the Koakiri body plunge. What's that so name? this is... Okay, this is the pool where you can be relaxing and you'll see people going through. Oh. So there we go. We now know it's the reef. I should have read this before we talked about it. I, <laughs> I put this in the story and I didn't read it. I'm awful. <laughs> I'm very excited uh, for this. We Not also have before, but. we we have River Village. River Village offers several family friendly attractions and experiences and features Copico Y Winding River, a gentle winding river that passes through the volcano's hidden caves, featuring spontaneous water effects and a journey through the Cave of Starlight. Ooh. 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 They have the Tiki Reef, a whimsical toddler play area with spraying Maori fountains, slides, and a kid-sized volcano. Uh, Runamook, <laughs> Runamooka Reef, a three-story water playground inspired by the coral reef overflowing with twisting slides, sprinklers, and more. Mm-hmm. Honu, an adventurous multi-passenger mm-hmm. raft ride that will soar across a dual wall. And Ika Moana. Oh, those are one of those scary ones that do the... Yeah. The up in the down. Yep. Yeah. And Eco Moana, a twisting, twisting multi-passenger raft ride that will glide across bubbling geysers. So you'll feel mm. some bubbling under your butt. Like you're farting in the water. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, wrapping what? it up will be uh, Rainforest Village. Rainforest Village features an incredible assortment of attractions for thrill seekers, including Meku or Maku, North America's first saucer sa- saucer ride, sending multi-passenger rafts speeding around three saucer-shaped curves. 
Mm. Interesting. Puihi, a breathtaking multi-passenger raft ride that will plunge you into darkness before bursting into a funnel and launching into a zero-gravity drop. What? Scary. The that oh, one's gonna make my heart go up real quick. This is a punny name here. The Oya oh yeah and Ono oh drop slides, <sighs> two twisting adrenaline pumping slides that launch you four or six feet above water at the end. That la- so like I'm assuming that's similar to like Crush and Gushers, like yeah, shoot you I would up. But, yeah. Which is which is an incredible thing if you've never done those. It is insane how that ride works because you yeah. plummet down and then you're like i can't get back up there i'm gonna water slide and it shoots you up uh we also have the tiawa the fearless river an action-packed racing torrent river where you'll have to hang tight in your inner tube amidst roaring whitewater rapids the taniwa tubes four unique easter island inspired slides with rafts for single or double riders and the puka uli lagoon a tranquil pool where you can swim and relax so that's a lot going on there yeah there's a lot going on a lot of it sounds really fun and exciting definitely a uh, a water park for thrill seekers from the yeah. way they're kind of pushing out but also still extremely family family friendly their uh, family offerings they have here are quite a lot i've, I've got to well, say the, just yeah, based the kid on, area sounds pretty yeah. good yeah and uh you know the one cool thing about it too is that they said one thing they realize at water parks are a lot of times these lines take so long to get people through yeah. that they are finding the ways to optimize to make sure that these will all be a uh, very short waits as possible i know one thing they're that I've heard is that they made a new type of inner tube delivery system for these tube rides where instead of having to like carry tubes up or anything like that, apparently it'll just, they have like a, almost like an elevator. Not, I I know you see it some water parks where they have like the really long one where they throw a tube on and it slowly goes up. One thing I read from some site, I apologize that I can't credit them for it because I just don't remember and I didn't write it down, but they're talking about literally like a tube that goes straight up. And like a, the like a tubes will kind of, yeah, kind of like that, a big one for tubes to go up. I don't know if that was true or just like complete I, BS, but that would be incredible. My if number one thing happened. is I'm hoping they'll keep in mind about how you, how shade is extra important at water parks because nobody's wearing their clo- the clothes. And so you're just out in the Florida sun. It doesn't take very long for some that hasn't, like if you look at my arm from waiting in Frozen, for those of you that can see, I clearly, it looks like I have a Frankenstein arm. You just want to show your tattoo. No, I, well, yeah. You can't tell what it is that far away. But the, the, this will burn in like 10 seconds. Like you, so I'm hoping lots of foliage, yeah. lots of coverage would be nice because that's my issue with the Disney water parks is as cool as everything is at those parks, so don't get me wrong, I, I like them both. It, it, um, a lot of those things are like on stairs in the sun and my feet burn on the ground, let alone my skin. I wasn't joking. I am very, I have delicate ginger skin. I am, I, I can't get burnt. So I, uh, I, I will appreciate it if there is shade. This is someplace, I, I've said it before, I don't want to even go see Wet n Wild because I really do not like water parks. I used to whenever I was younger and then it's just something that kind of it grew out of me. I don't like the idea. I know they chlorinate and they keep everything clean but i you know it's it's i'm getting like very in howard hughes as i grow (laughs) up i'm afraid of people peeing on me with a long finger (laughs) (laughs) so (laughs) me uh, this one i will i will give it a shot not just because it's universal but because it genuinely does sound amazing from everything that's been out there so far so time will tell new details will come out so um, any final thoughts on Volcano Bay and what it sounds like? No, I'm very excited. When is that opening again? Uh, they're predicting, based on uh, someone released from that event, that the Explorer ticket will be available starting June 1st, 2017. Okay. So I know before they were saying that they were hoping for a, a winter launch date or a spring Win- of 2017. 2016? Oh, okay. Uh, I, I think it well winter twenty six yeah it wasn't winter twenty sixteen I can't remember I think it was spring now that I think about it twenty seventeen no, I, I thought we talked about it and we thought it was weird that it opened in like a cold month either way they're now saying that it should be opening June first twenty seventeen right, so that is the like expected date less so than a year to go I'm very pumped for it so we should go to do wet and wild before it closes but wait till it's like mm. November we will yeah so once it's, it's, it's nice and cool 
and maybe we could go like morning and then evening so we, the chances of sunburn will be slimmer and slimmer. with a real rainy day yeah 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 and a bushy beard a great um, big bushy beard <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get on to our dining review of Three Broomsticks. Now, I said uh, one of the greatest things about now having Oliver on our team is that we do get the ex- we get the uh, experience and knowledge of a Brit, and the uh, and, and it is terrible, and it is terrible for the most <laughs> part. But whenever we do talk about stuff that pretends to be British, it does help us out. So we are going to talk about that, but we have a little bit of a video. That uh, yeah, it, it was on there. It okay. was on there, Oliver. Gosh, wait, fallen engineer. Fill the space. Engineer. Well, there was a fire recently. Yeah, so the three on broomsticks ball. is obviously oh, okay. not new. Uh, Let's skip that fire. Yeah, talk. we're gonna skip the fire talk. Uh, three broomsticks is not new by any means. However, we have not reviewed it on this show yet. We talk a lot about it because we always say like, if you're going to Islands of Adventure and you're gonna, you're gonna eat at a quick service place you want to go there because in our opinion it's, it's still there. the best out of the rest yeah. but we might have a different Better opinion on it now but before we do it we're gonna show this little video for everyone watching right now uh so they can see it for everyone listening it is available at Diz youtube which is youtube.com slash wdw info so let's take it away I believe a uh, beaver. No, no, no. The horns. They got. A, you think those are testral? Yeah, that's a testral? beaver. Beaver horn. Beaver horn. Yeah. Agatha Beaver Horn. That's my pen name so, from now on. Yeah. For when I write it mystery be. novels. Oh wait, we're back. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> um, so that was a little bit of a look at uh, three broomsticks there at uh, Islands of Adventure, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Hogsmeade. So uh, yeah, this opened up in the great year. 2010 mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. 2010 for some people out there uh and this was the the only quick service option available inside the wizarding world of harry potter hogsmeade and remains to be this day uh however it kind of revolutionized from what i've been told dining at universal quick service style before this time um i've eaten it a lot of places uh i've eaten in at the quick service in jurassic park toon lagoon uh, Seuss Landing, uh, it's pretty much all crap. I think the to only say one it nicely. I haven't eaten at is Toon Lagoon. Pretty sure. No, you know what? I don't think I've eaten the Marvel one either because it's so... Cafe 4. It, yeah, it's just cafe. So it's just like not a place that speaks to you. I understand that everything's cafe. Yeah, I, you know, but... and I can't eat there now because 
one of Teresa's offspring works there, so I just don't trust it anymore. <laughs> oh, it's man. it's been dead forever it's on me shady. now. So uh, yeah, so Three Broomsticks really did up the level of dining quick service style at Universal, and you can see it because since then they have just tried to up everything new that comes in of course uh the the fast food boulevard inside springfield that we rave about every single time we uh get mm-hmm. to talk about it and eat there as well as leaky cauldron I actually have a vlog from that too mm. that i just realized i never put up so okay well, well, well do you know where that footage is yeah, yeah it's on my cell phone. still on my phone okay <laughs> <laughs> there we go so we'll have to get that up maybe we'll have a uh a, a, that well Try to get that up for next week while I'm not here and we don't have a show going up. Okay, that's We'll give a good them a idea. little taste. There you go, yeah. A little taste of what's happening while we're gone. Uh, so, where was I at with that? So, let's let's talk... You said that we, we, t- we, we rave about The Simpsons. Yeah, we, we rave area. about everything. This was the start of where food started to get good. And not only that, but also... It, we have to mention the immersion of being inside yeah. three broomsticks. Just a beautiful, beautiful building. Um, you know, their their take on three broomsticks from the movie. It's very dark, very woody, uh, very, very old style pubish. I mean, this is where wizards and witches want to go whenever they need to to crave their thirst for butter beer or yeah. grab a a nice uh it feels a like nice it's hearty been around meal. for a while and it's a well satin pub. Exactly. Uh, then, of course, uh, Harry Potter music blasting throughout the restaurant the entire time just mm-hmm. just keeps that mood elevated in there. The mm-hmm. uh, just nice nice theming and decor around. Lots of hidden like broomsticks hanging all around. Can't go wrong with having a cauldron in there. Uh, I just can't say enough for the actual theming inside this restaurant. I love sitting in there. Um, that's why a lot of times whenever I'm looking for a drink, I will go to the Hogshead Pub, which is connected onto Three Broomsticks, get it, and then try to get a seat where I can uh, see into Three Broomsticks. Whenever it's really busy, they don't allow you to go and uh, take your drinks over and sit in the restaurant. They want to keep it sectioned off so that way people who are dining yeah. have open seating available. But it's nice to get that view where you can still see into the restaurant. It's just a, a beautiful use of space. Use of space. 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 space, space the final frontier. This is my empty. So clearly I love the inside. Let's get into the food though. And let's throw it over to our British expert right away before we talk okay, about I'll our get food items. Right here for you. Oh, you meant Oliver, sorry. Oh, okay, yeah. We'll let Rhino talk first, actually. He's more <laughs> British than you are. Oh I have nothing <laughs> to say to that. <laughs> Go on, Rona. You go, go, go on. Oh no, I was kidding. I'm just. Oh, you were joking. I was tump tumping right over here. Okay. So let let's start with your overall opinions, and then we'll get into the food items that we tried and our opinions okay. on that. So, but at first question. Yes, Rhino. Are you a Harry Potter fan? I am. Yes. How big of a fan? I've seen the films, not read all the books. I read the first book, but that's right. because as a child I was probably less than average in school. So you know, it improved as I got older. So was but... Harry. Yeah, and so there you go. He exactly, did. and I'm sh- I could give myself a scar on my forehead. We'd be identical. He did try to listen to the audio books, but unfortunately, his spelling is just as bad as his listening. Yep. So, or <laughs> backwards, listening bad as his- <laughs> it's it's all yeah. fine. He's but, just uh, terrible all around. We love you. Oh, Rhino. Um, yeah. So just before we move on to the food and everything, I've got to say the actual architecture is accurate. Um, we do love those dark woods, and it's. It's pretty much spot on, uh, a lot of the buildings and architecture that you do see in England. It's got a very um, churchy feel inside, I'd say. Um, church? Yeah, that's how our church... Because over here in Florida, you don't see... I've never been in a church in Florida, but you don't see uh, woods like this. So that darker wood that you see there, um, and the way it warps almost, because it's been there for so long, it's it's... Honestly, it's spot on. It reminds me so much of English architecture. It's unbelievable. They've, they've not done anything here that's um, remotely distant from what I would expect to see. So you've actually been in places that have looked like this? Oh, yeah, all the time. Um, okay, that blows my mind. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I, like, uh, I, village halls. I grew up in a village in England, and village halls and churches, they would always look just like this with dark wood and... Um, those kinds of chairs, the tables, what, did you the find worn that fill. places that looked like this were more of a reliable place to go than somewhere that looked trendy and newer? Okay, so just to clarify, like we do have new. This is like older buildings. So, like when you say it's, 
Yeah, but I mean, do you trust the pub more because it's in an oh. establishment like that is what I'm saying. Like, were you like, oh, this must be a good place. It's been so in here. Is this the type of place you would expect to find, like, those old stereotypical British men that have, like, the mush mouth? Yeah, yeah. the windows they'd are all have, warped have, with the bubbles so yeah, you the wives can't see in. <laughs> they'd uh, have the big, the big mustaches yeah. and a pint of... Uh, alcoholic beverage yeah. it wouldn't quite have a handle on there but no this is honestly this is what a lot of traditional english pubs look like they okay. really do so it's the architecture is spot on it really is they've they've got it down um to a t but people want to go here to eat more than anything else so is the food spot on the food reminded me not so much of uh pub grub which is what we call it in england mm-hmm. pub food but more like my school dinners. So, and that's not to say it was bad, because I know there's a lot of connotations around school food being, you know, I like not the great. Oh, it is. But my like school lunch. food. Because um, for us, it was like lunchtime, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just had lunch. It was A or B lunch. A or you B so lunch. Fancy. What's you A or B? It's a nice place. It's, it's, it's time for dinner, children. If you have too many students, you have to break up lunch periods. Oh, yeah. You we, don't have space in the cafeteria. It's different in Hogwarts, but. Yeah. <laughs> where you went to school, I assume. It's no, we they split us up as well. We just yeah. we were group one and two. I should have really thought about it, but no, no. the food is the, it's spot on to um, English school food, which I don't know. You're in that environment. I know they've aimed for it to look like a pub rather than the cafeteria at yeah, but man, you Hogwarts, guys eat much okay, better than but we did here in America. Is English school food good? Because everyone Americans know, uh, obviously Michelle Obama and her war against school lunches. <laughs> no, and uh, Jamie Oliver from your country, he mm-hmm. came here to try and revolutionize and it unfortunately i don't think it went well and he because i know you guys had a big food revolution in england we in did the last like 10 years right yeah we did we it reminds me more of okay so i was a child of the 90s i feel like we always come back to my age on these shows but i was born in the 90s so i went to primary school in the 90s and this is what the food was like then as i got older and i went to secondary school or high school it was different. There was more choices because at that point they could kind of let you choose what you wanted to eat for yourself. So it's less like it then, but when it was chose for you, this was more like my primary school. You were spoiled in your lunchroom. I'm going to tell Probably. you that right now. I'm going yeah. to tell you what one of our specialties was. They took a bag of Doritos and scooped beef into it and said, here you go. Hot lunch. <laughs> Are you being serious? My yeah, favorite, it's called a walking taco. My favorite my favorite school lunch from whenever I was growing up. It was, it was also a taco style. Uh, but they took a piece of pita bread, cut it in half, and then opened it up, poured like a mozzarella cheese on the bottom the taco meat and then we would just drown it in doritos and yeah. uh taco sauce <laughs> man that one sounds better and uh, lettuce and then it always came with came with like one orange wedge <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah and the, the, the fruit <laughs> like but i i'm sure it is crap but it's like one of those things no the dorito the memories dorito i thing, have I made it recently because i was yeah. like i want that dorito thing I made a nicer version of it because by the time the kids got it at lunch, so they made it in the morning. So when the kids got it at lunch, you got a bag full of eh, kind of reheated meat with soggy Doritos. And they were like, that's acceptable well, to feed children. The worst part is once I went to high school, I was like so sad because they did upgrade the food a little bit because yeah. they had actual kitchens there as compared to my elementary school. The food was shipped in. But then my mom, uh, she actually worked for a long time at an elementary school. So one of her was my favorite lunches. Did she like she would buy away, them and. <laughs> <laughs> she would bring them home for me to eat, <laughs> which was Aww. awesome. I love my mom. Oh, it makes me happy. Nostalgia <laughs> trip. I wish but I had someone in this. Again, side. Oliver. Yes. Is this food good <laughs> or bad? Because you're still not Brit food. Okay, so I had fish and chips. Um, yes. I did it on purpose because, you know, it's the stereo. Yeah. I, I've, had, uh, I've had my fair share of fish and chips and more. Um <sighs> It's not the best fish and chips I've ever had, which isn't unsurprising because they're not being served, you know, in England. But they're not the worst. They were... It feels so awkward to describe a place like this, but I would describe it as being adequate. They were adequate. Have so, you, Have you had a lot of fish and chips in the United States? I'm just curious. Is it, yeah. is it like how... Because you're saying not the best fish and chips you've ever had. So, like, how much have you had that since you've come here? The fish and chips you get in Epcot are more accurate yeah. as to what you're gonna we're, find we're in an area not very well known for having good seafood either i mean we're in the center of a state unfortunately i mean yeah there's oceans on either side but we're an hour away from any ocean i don't know yeah i grew no, up you on go, the water where it was like here's two lobsters for 10 bucks if you go to tampa or port canaveral 
like in, while you're in Orlando, if you drive an hour and a half to the west or an hour to the east, you will automatically find much better seafood. It's it's amazing how much of a difference one hour yeah. actually makes. Um, so you think Epcot's more authentic, but is it better? Yeah, that's which good. which one would you prefer at the end of the day? Uh, be be absolutely honest. Okay, so I. I Okay, this is how I'd describe it. And I am a little bit strange. So I actually, even though I think that the Epcot one is more like a traditional fish and chips, mm-hmm. traditional fish and chips is very heavy. Like it's cooked. It's all cooked in oil and grease. So it sits very so heavy on your stomach. it's like oily. It is. Yeah. Oh, incredibly. Yeah. yeah. If you've had traditional English fish and chips, like you feel full because that oil just sits there in your stomach. It's not as oily um, over at the Three Broomsticks. So honestly, I probably prefer theirs. Oh. Um, the fish wasn't bad, uh, and the chips, the chips were, they were more like uh, an oven fry yeah. than well, they were a like, deep fat fry. They were like the wedges, so right? They yeah. were, yeah they're, yeah. they're essentially steak fries. Yeah. Um, if only but, we had a picture of all this stuff so oh, yeah. we could it's actually weird. put, like, <laughs> for, I mean, for the listening, yeah, you're having Look a good time, but, oh, wow, a visual. How'd you get that over? Did wow. you just... Did you just like bring that up? That's it's amazing. amazing. Now, did you end up ever using any of the tartare sauce? I did. I yeah. I um. I did try some of the tartare sauce. Um. Honestly, you can't go wrong with tartar sauce. Good. Yeah. I know you didn't I... use your malt vinegar. <laughs> you didn't no, squeeze I your didn't. lemon either. Did I not? I'm actually. No. Quite... You told me you were going to, and oh. I watched with bated breath the I'm entire time. Quite upset happened. then, because normally I would. I love um citrus so no normally yeah. i'm straight there i was just too eager that's what it was now no i desserts were on the table that's i why. did use malt vinegar on mine uh i had the shepherd's pie that is served with a garden salad uh and this was it, it, okay so if you're watching from the picture you can see and to describe it to the listeners out there the top felt like it was sitting under a heated light too long to the point that the potatoes on top literally crisp over. Yeah, they're, like they um, didn't look like potatoes when you brought it back. It looked like there was bread on top of your Yeah, thing. and that's how it felt too. I had to kind of crack through, and then I used malt vinegar on the top of it to kind of get some liquid back into it and soak it up. Uh, the meat, everything on the inside of it, it was it was decent uh, shepherd's pie. Uh, I, I make a pretty good shepherd's pie at home myself if i don't if i do say so myself um this was abs for like 12 bucks for this it absolutely wasn't bad at all i do hate their garden salads that they serve though um it's basically uh just iceberg lettuce with a couple vegetables thrown in and then instead of giving you like a fancy homemade type of dressing to go along with it vinaigrette something fun it's literally just ken's yeah uh restaurant dressing and i it pisses me off that they do that it seems like such a cheap way out whenever everything else they strive for it to be a little bit more on the unique side so mine is again i i stand with this and that's my overall opinion of this restaurant is the shepherd's pie you get here is still better than any of the crap you will find around the rest of the park. I've got to say as well, like looking at that photo, that's like that is exactly what I was saying when I said it reminds me of uh, a British school, school dinner. That looks yeah. exactly like it. Apart like from you know the, what it is, but it's not quite cooked. Yeah, the you way. know it's going to be good. <laughs> like, yeah. You know it's going to taste good, but it just doesn't look that appealing. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. So. Um, yeah, and one thing that did annoy me, I've got to say, is the uh, the Ken's sauce. Yeah. That's a brand we just don't get. So they they make the effort on other things to get in the English oh, brands. So I feel like they could English, do it. It's not even an English like it's not something you carry. No, no. We can, you can get you. We don't carry that specific brand. That's all. Oh, so we that's, yeah yeah. It just doesn't feel right. Like they've they've made the effort with other stuff. Why they can't do it with? I would have rather had like dressing. HP sauce sitting on the table that I could have put <laughs> on the salad. <laughs> they have HP sauce in the other one. They in, do, in, yeah, they in, yeah. Di- in Tigon Alley. They do. Cauldron. Well, y- Rhino, you had the definitely the most British of the uh, items that we all <laughs> chose from at this one. So, do you want to talk about that? Yes. Um, I went with the um, the chicken and ribs platter. I don't normally eat <laughs> ribs, but I went for it because they serve this both as just a chicken platter and a ribs platter. But it is my go- my the chicken one is my go to meal here anyways i i like it because it's like you get a half uh i don't know is that a half chicken or is that just a breast i don't know 
Uh, that was, was like, like a little leg. I think it's a hog. It was like a quarter chicken, I okay. would say. Yeah, and and then the the roasted potatoes, and you get the corn on the cob, and I don't know. That's just like not a meal I would expect to eat in a theme park. Really, you think hot dogs, hamburgers, chicken nuggets, stuff like that. Like it's very under fried, but I always really enjoy those potatoes um, a lot. You can't go wrong there. The chicken, the chicken is good. Chicken's cooked well, and I actually thought the ribs were actually pretty good. Um, I, like I said, I don't really like meat on the bone. Um, so I'm not an expert on yeah. ribs, but I can tell like they're good, but they're also, you know, I know I'm at a theme park. It's not like, oh, these are the best ribs I've ever had. You know, I think that goes to Morimoto and mm-hmm. Disney Springs. Yeah, those, those are, are pretty good. good. No, it's, uh, yeah, I, I wish that Three Broomsticks would be more like Leaky Cauldron and that it tried to go more adventurous with the yeah. the British fare it tries to serve. Uh, this is definitely on the Americanized end of things. But it is, it is, it's like what you said. Like the meal's not very expensive. I think that was like twelve ninety nine, twelve fifty, it was somewhere, somewhere around, around there. Yeah. It's not, it's not much. They do annual pass holder discounts in there too. Um, and one of my favorite things is so like yours was fifteen. Mine was, but that's mine still was fifteen a, because it was the two platter yeah. together. It was like a the, lot. the chicken yeah. ones are normal. Yeah, it was a lot of food. Like I was very full. Like. Uh, chicken um, one's 11 typically yeah so that's the one i normally get and then you know pass holder discount so it's like it'll come out to like you know it's 10 or 11 bucks for that meal and versus like the 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 almost 10 dollar cheeseburger and fries you're gonna get like i'd rather have that 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 looks like it's gonna be more sustenance for me for the day yeah versus the other meal and then on top of that what i really like in in the restaurant too is you can go in and get you know your standard issue your butter beer um drink they don't serve soda in the wizarding world of harry potter so you can get like some pear ciders it's non-alcoholic um but i the drink of my drink of choice pumpkin fizz yes um it's it's carbonated pumpkin juice but it is so good and what i like is like you can't really get it anywhere else you can only get it inside of that restaurant and um i don't know that's cool like because i'll I'll buy a bottle of pumpkin juice and keep it in my refrigerator and have like one sip a day (laughs) For like a week or two when I first didn't have an annual pass. I remember getting like one and just like afraid to drink it because I liked it so much I didn't want it to be gone. And now I have an alcoholic beverage I know how to make with the pumpkin juice. So I always like to buy at least a bottle or two when I go. Yeah, I really, uh, I, I got a cold butter beer whenever we ate here. I just have to get it every time. I, yeah. I love cold butter beer. Yeah. It tastes so delicious. And uh, and Oliver did have the pumpkin juice. I too. did, yeah. I got the um, the flat the pumpkin version. Juice. Yeah. So, I had the pumpkin. Yeah, fizz. So it was. I think it was very similar to yours, Rhino. It just wasn't carbonated, and it's it tasted really good. Yeah, I was so impressed. And that's I, I kind of told you after. Uh, of course, if you get it inside Three Broomsticks Leaky Cauldron uh, and um, Hogshead Pub, they do it on tap instead of. You can buy it out of the bottle, as Rhino described. It's yeah. much sweeter if you get it on like tap. You can see the stuff in the bottom uh, of the bottle, like yeah, the spices it, and everything have been sitting in there. It's much less potent. I think more people end up enjoying it. So, yeah, uh, that leads us into the dessert. We did uh, the absolutely incredible potted butter yes. beer. Yet another way that you can have butter beer that I was not aware of, but am so happy exists in the world so right now you can get like craig said you got the cold butterbeer he likes six types i like the frozen type um a butterbeer then they introduced the hot type which Uh is great i mean that one might be my favorite but you because we live in florida it's only like two months of the year that you can even bear to drink it Uh but then there's the fudge they added when they opened the sweet shop Uh that's super good there's the soft serve ice cream Uh also good and then this little gem this pot of amazing flavors it's oh my gosh. possibly the best thing i had to eat the whole day it was outstanding it's so simple too it's just a simple little dessert it's just that little it's basically like butterbeer pudding inside of a little mason jar and that was whipped cream and it's but it's just like it it feels like you have it it's like what you described in the in in the little vlog we did yeah as you know it's a good dessert because no okay i'll finish it when when the the second you can taste it and you know it's not good for you that's how you know it's a good dessert oh i did say that i remember now but i'd say that's my biggest complaint look how small it is yeah it's also it to be about five times as big (laughs) it's also not the most butter beerish of the butter beer items yeah a little Um, more subtle on the flavor but excellent dessert we also did try the trifle uh this was not as big of a hit on our table it was a chocolate style trifle no peas no beef in it just not the uh, traditional english yeah not the traditional english trifle just some uh jam chocolate pieces uh i yeah. not it, i didn't like this 
I didn't like it. It either. looks impressive. Yeah. I, I would say you in the in this area you want to get and that's the other thing too. It's just a plain dessert. You're in the Wizarding World. Get something yeah. that you can't get anywhere else. You can. I mean, I can make a better travel than I mean, I mean I'll well, make a good travel. But excuse me. But um, I think they. I, mean, sorry, go on. No. So so they they have an exclusive ice cream over there too. They they it's like their strawberry and peanut butter like Ben and Jerry's makes a special flavor just for them. Or I think it's Ben and Jerry's. Uh-huh. Um, and there's like three flavors, but I I believe the strawberry and peanut butter one is just for the Wizarding World or something like that. Well, at least that's what they told me when it opened. That might not be true anymore, but um, there's that. There, get get Harry Potter stuff. Don't be a loser. Well, I think they've included this because, it, honestly, trifle is like such a staple of the English dessert or okay. pudding, as we say. Um, Do you just call it pudding? Yeah, pudding. Pudding isn't like those pudding cups. Pudding is dessert in England. Oh. So that's what is we call it. Is your traditional trifle usually chocolate or is it fruit and vanilla? Our traditional trifle is like what we ate. It's very similar to that, except it's heavily, like, it, it depends who's making it, like, if the it's one I someone make is in a pumpkin gingerbread trifle, it's, it's normally got a lot of alcohol in it. If you make it yourself, so. I just don't like chocolate and strawberries together. It's a combination I don't get for it. That's why I tried to church it up in the vlog that will also be released of our experience actually sitting there eating. I tried to say it in a nice way of saying this is something good for uh, people who like chocolate and strawberries together. Yeah, he was being positive. That's that's not me though. Um, I just I don't get it. But overall. Uh, the price of our meal after our we each got a specialty drink, two desserts, three entrees with our annual pass discount. It was uh, around like fifty five. I think it was originally sixty four. So uh, add another family member on there, you're looking at you know eighty ish. Um, well, well, it's great. Is there's uh, well, okay. So there's an option in there. We didn't really talk about it real quick, but the um, oh, the there's great the feast, feast yeah. The and I feast, did yeah. that when I went with a group of people for once. Finally, um, it was uh, like a, for friends of ours, and they had a kid too. And um, so you get the big you get the big salad to start with. Yep. Everybody gets you get I, the ribs, the chicken, the potatoes, corn, corn. That's it, right? I think. I believe that's all. But it all comes. But it's it's in more than enough for each person in the group. Because at first I was like, oh, it's going to be like exactly like if we got our own separate meals, and it actually worked out to be more than yeah. That. And it's like only fifty bucks. So yeah, it's it, a good. It's uh, a, it is a good yeah. deal because you get your like Craig said, you get your annual pass holder discount on that as well too. So yep. I I mean that's a that's a you know so when you're getting into the larger family me- or more family members not larger i'm sorry um <laughs> more family members like craig said maybe that's an option for you too yeah so i still think this is better than any of the other swill that is served around swill. uh yeah i'm being very harsh on it uh there's there are good items here and there as you go about islands of adventure but it's this is still to me the gem of quick service dining whenever you're at islands um so I, I recommend it. I don't know what you guys think, but that's me. Now I've thought about it and I've really given it some thought. It probably is the best quick service. Well, it is. It's the best quick service you can get in the park in Islands of Adventure. Yeah, There's definitely. no other one that even gives it a run for its money yeah. in Islands of Adventure, for sure. So, of course, if you leave the park, I would say go to Fast Food Boulevard, Leaky Cauldron, or all the way over to Cabana Bay to uh, the Bayliner Diner. Those are my top three choices of other places to go eat. That's just me. Uh, but I hope you guys uh, enjoyed our take on Three Broomsticks, especially getting some of the British background on it. I appreciated that. Yeah. Just me. <laughs> Again, it, it's all just me. So I thank think... You, uh, that's it. No, thank you. Thank you guys for all of your great input on it. So that's going to wrap us up here. So, of course, uh, if you want to know more information, get links to some of the stuff we talked about today or find out about our other shows on the Diz Unplugged Podcast Network, please head to DizUnplugged.com. That's the home of our show notes page and so, so much more. Everything out there that you'll need to do. Just if you want the Universal stuff specifically, you'll find the big blue box that says uh, Universal Edition on it. That's where you'll find all of our crap that we put out there. And believe you me, it is crap. Uh, Also, you know, go ahead and follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter. Subscribe to us on YouTube, all of our YouTube channels, as well as iTunes. Make sure you're doing that. Leave us the feedback and comments. So I'm starting. I made a. I made a resolution to myself, not a universal resolution. We'll have that at the end of the show. (laughs) We'll have that at the end of the show. Uh, But I made a personal resolution to start getting better about reading and trying to comment, especially uh, if it's a negative comment. I am more likely to jump on you and (laughs) I'll get you. Get you with my. (laughs) My uh, powerful words uh, that I'm much better at typing than speaking. 
But yeah, just go ahead and leave us all the feedback you can. Of course, if you like this show, you like this episode, go ahead and hit the thumbs up on uh, the the little thumbs up guy there below if you're watching this on YouTube right now. And yeah, just uh, keep on keeping on. That's my my, my Joe on, Dirt way to end it. Keep on moving, <laughs> gonna keep on keep on grooving. Oh, dude, that's there my Brady. Oh yeah, hey, there we got the singing in. We, go. we got the singing <laughs> in. So thank you guys again. Thank you to everyone out there who took the time to watch and listen to this. I hope you enjoyed it, got a little bit out of it, but that's going to do it for this episode of the Universal Edition of the Diz Unplugged. We won't be back with you next week because I'll be on vacation, but the week after that with our great Royal Pacific Resort stuff. Mm-hmm. So. Again, that's going to do it for this episode. And uh, remember... The resolution. Oh, the resolution. Volcano Bay is universal.